Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about sensory overload because of the showcase season and all the travel ball that goes on all year long and the, quite frankly, all the pressure that the young players are under playing in front of the coaches and they're trying to make a good impression and, and maybe they're doing a good job as they're communicating, but when they get in front of the coaches at a showcase and you know they're doing the batting practice and they're hitting or whatever it is, you know, they feel like they have to hit 10 out of 10 line drives. When in fact, the real goal is to look efficient and professional and in, in, in to look like someone that they can work with, that they're excited to work with. Coaches will often say, I could work with this kid. He would fit well into our program. Now, you know, what that means is that you understand what a professional looking approach feels like and how to access it by understanding the rehearsals that you need to do. But that's just kind of an introduction of what I wanted to talk about. What I really wanted to talk about was intention. Um, once you have that look, once you have that look where you're doing your rehearsals on deck and you know what to do in between innings and you know how to prepare for the game when you're standing out on that white line when everybody's stretching out, out on the foul line before the game and watching the pitcher warm up and you know how to eliminate pitches and you know figure out what the guy's going to be throwing and you actually get the actual look of each of his pitches and um, you know you're, you're getting prepared for the game there is a big difference between a professional and an amateur you know I often tell my students that if I could get inside your head and we went out there together and you know, we wouldn't have to spike the football. We wouldn't have to jump around waving our arms. Simply the things that we would be doing, not that we were trying to get attention, but we'd be busy doing the work to get our timing down, to get our filtering down, uh, you know, coping with the pitch or sinking release, timing the pitch, rehearsing contact, rehearsing all the different things, a coordinated stride and transfer, getting our swing flow down, doing all the things while we're studying the pitcher all at once, showing a square swing, doing all the different things that professionals do and that amateurs seem to struggle. Well, they, do, they don't seem to, they do. When, when, when you look at it in an amateur, when I look at an amateur and you know, he's doing the best he can to, you know, to hold it together, they're struggling to swing and to maintain a, a, an axis that's really stable. Well, they're struggling because they don't have the correct intentions. And that's what I wanted to talk about primarily is about your intentions and how that affects information overload. Okay. Okay. So to understand what I mean about intention, I'm just going to give you a quick metaphor, a quick example of what intentions are. Um, uh, or what I mean by that, doing an athletic movement or an, an approach to your swing or your timing or your mindset. Your intention, let's, let's, let's take it outside of baseball. Let's say you have a hammer and a nail and you have to attach a piece of wood to something else. Maybe it's a piece of finishing, uh, um, piece of wood that's up in the top corner, um, uh, some crown molding or something. And it takes these little, little finishing nails and they have to be at a certain angle or whatever it is. Okay. Well, you know what it's supposed to look like and you're holding it up there and you have to hammer the nails in at a certain angle and you don't want to bend the nail and you don't want to break the wood, you, you know, because it's all painted and it, it, everything looks good. In other words, you have the correct intention. You know what you're doing. When you have a clear picture of what your job is, then everything clears up. And so that's what I wish for you. I want you to understand what it means to be mechanically efficient and then have the ability to find a mechanically efficient swing that's repeatable. Now you're on a journey. I I call these these mechanical this mechanical journey part of the 12 touchstones. There's 12 problem areas and then there's 12 
solutions or action steps that are natural movements that you're probably already familiar with most of them and these natural movements solve 99 out of 100 problems mechanically before they even come up okay so my goal is to teach you sequentially okay and and also incrementally as you go and maybe you're at 10 percent in your in your launch position and maybe you're at, at, at 50 percent efficiency in your approach and maybe you're at uh, 25 percent efficiency in your uh, power generation and and 20 percent at your power delivery and just you're all over the map but whatever the problem or the the focus of this the point i'm trying to make is that you're somewhere in the spectrum of of getting to the place where you're becoming brutally efficient with your mechanics because make no mistake about it if you are going to become a great hitter you have to be able to have brutally efficient mechanics because good pitching gets that good hitting you have to have brutally efficient mechanics and you have to have a laser focused mindset you have to totally understand what's happening in other words you've got that crown molding up there and you don't want to mess it up but you need to know, you, you need to have your mindset right about what's going to play out what pitch you're, you're looking for what you're going to do with it where you're going to hit it you have to have the timing so so it's your, it's your mechanics it's your mindset it's your timing and then it, from the timing you have to deal with things that are within the timing purview those are the timing the, those are the things in the timing toolbox when we co-mingle and we try to take mechanical things because every mechanical change adjusts your time to the ball so every time you adjust your mechanics you're actually messing with your timing and you're making it all the more harder you know you're making it harder for your automatic mind to process the speed of the pitch because each time you're trying to zero in on the timing you're changing you're shuffling the deck and you're changing the rules you know um, in a quick example of this if I'm if I'm gonna putt a ball if I have three, if I have three balls that I got to putt, and I got to sink an eight-foot putt in golf, and and I shot, you know, perfectly lined up, maybe off by an inch, but but I'm long, by a foot, and then the next one I'm short by a foot. Well, now I pretty much have the feel for for sinking the, that putt. All right. Well, same with right, left, and then sinking it. Okay. With hitting. It's maybe you're a little out front, okay, and then maybe it's a little deep, and then you can push the ball to an area where this, it's at the perfect depth. So it's kind of a rule of three where you can zero in by exaggerating on both extremes, on both ends of the spectrum. All right, so once you get that and you're able to find a mechanically efficient swing because you understand what the intention is, you understand how to develop a mechanically efficient swing and then you know how to use it to be repeatable so that you can focus your attention on your mindset and on on your timing and let your automatic mind do its work so intention is critically important and you need to understand that now information overload happens when you're being taught something without intention you're being taught something you're being taught to swing the hammer with a technique it's kind of silly actually and it you know always point the you know if if you only learned one way to swing a hammer and it didn't include the ability to be able to contort your body in a way where you can you know drive that finishing nail in in and in, into the wood like I was talking about the intention of attaching that crown molding to the ceiling well you're gonna have a problem with hitting you have to be able to um, understand the intentions around your mechanics so that you can make all the adjustments that you need to make on every area on a spectrum and then become mechanically efficient you need to be able to do that with your mindset you need to be able to do that with your timing so that you can let your dang automatic mind your subconscious which is a million times faster as a processor of information you, you, you need to let it do, do its work so if you're like me if you're like uh, major leaguers even 
if you're like minor leaguers, you're like college and high school players that are serious and they shoot, you're already committed and devoted to playing this game. You want, you love the game and you want to get better. If you're committed to this, if you're a serious player, if you're not a serious player and you're just, you're just there to, you know, play around, if it's like rec ball, then this is not for you. But if you are a serious player and you want the answers, you're, you're going to go to college. You maybe you want to go to a Division One school. Listen, I, I, I've, I say all the time that, listen, I, I had two horrible years as a young player, and then Frank Robinson gave me one piece of the puzzle with the plan, with the mindset. He taught me the intention I was supposed to have, which gives me flexibility that I can, you know, that I can use because I have perspective, so I can, I can use it in, in different situations but maintain the integrity of the intention of that you're supposed to follow this plan of the, of the way you're supposed to follow the plan I did it I was just stubborn enough that I didn't change the plan and because I didn't change the plan I was able to use what I had there and that next year, I hit 322 in the, at the next level, which was high A ball, and, and I was put on the major league roster. And the next year, I, I got called up to the big leagues. <laughs> it happened that fast. So if you don't think that you can be a guy that's sitting the bench in high school as a junior, and then all of a sudden be able to play at a Division One school and dominate, I have another thing coming because I didn't think I could even. I mean, I went from a place where I was listening to players at the end of the bench, older than me, and they were telling big fish stories. You know, they were, they were saying, oh, you know, I was looking for a fastball, and, but then at the last second, I, I, I saw his hand, and that, so I knew it was a curveball, and then, and then I saw it was low, so I didn't swing at it, and then I saw him grip it in his glove a certain way, and then I, I knew a slider was coming, and he threw a slider, and I hit a double or whatever. You know, just a bunch of fish stories recapping their at bat because they're kind of happy and they're just you know they hit a double or something they had a good game or something people like to talk like that okay so I'm sitting at the end of the bench like leaning over listening trying not let anybody know I am trying to listen but I'm trying to you know trying to learn well it never worked for me and I was always wondering how come how come it never works for me well guess what it doesn't work for anybody it didn't work for them either because they never got out of a ball Fortunately, Frank Robinson gave me the plan and I listened to him. Twelve years later, about twelve years later, I was playing for the Baltimore Orioles and signing my contract and Frank Robinson was the general manager at the time and I said, Frank, I never properly thanked you for changing the course of my career. He goes, what do you mean? I said, what you taught me about the plan. And I enabled me to, within a year, basically go from a, a failing minor league player to having a successful year, and then the next year be put on the roster and the following year be in the big leagues. He goes, oh, well, your success was thanks enough. He goes, but I can't tell you how many people I told the same damn thing. But they just didn't commit to it because they didn't believe it and maybe they didn't have someone explain it to them or maybe Frank didn't explain it as you know as convincing or they weren't ready to hear it but I was so what I'm saying is that I've been doing this research for 20 years for this very reason because I want to help players get this information from the very beginning and if you don't think that you can make a division one school and transform you know, it's, it's short-sighted. It's short-sighted because if you've been playing for 10, 10, 12 years already and you love this game, you're already committed. Heck, you're already doing this. You're already on a team. You're already committed. You're already trying like crazy to be a great player. You're, 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 you're putting in the work. You're putting in the hours. You're putting in the time. You just need to be smart about this. I mean, you're smart about your education. Well, you need to be smart about baseball, too. Otherwise, you're just going to go through your college career. You might have fun, and that's fine. And if that's what you want to do and you get a good education, go get a job, and, and that's it. And that's, that, that's okay. But if you want to see how far you can go, and that includes not settling for a Division two or Division three school or 
NAIA or junior college. Not that those are bad because the, they all have their own advantages about being drafted and, and all sorts of things like that. So it's not one or the other. I'm just, it's whatever your dream is. If your dream is to do something, you can have, you have the opportunity to do this. And what you do is you get a mentor and, and that's what successful people do. They go to the people who are the best in the world at what they do. So if, if, if you're struggling, if this resonates with you and you're dealing with some of the things that I was dealing with too, struggling, and, and you want to get to the bottom of this and you want a blueprint about what you've been doing, we can take a look at your swing. You can even send me a video and take a look at your swing and we can go over it and you can get a perspective of those problem areas. You can get a perspective of, 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 the, of the touchstones, the solutions about you know, what you need to do and you'll have a blueprint on, on the rehearsals, the types of rehearsals that you need to do so that you could become a player who understands intentions and those things grow so that you'll have the correct intentions about every process in the game so that you can make hitting automatic. Because if your intention is correct, you can't have information overload. Because if it's correct and you know it is deep down and you, you swing and miss, you, you tip your hat. You know, it's n you, you know it's not a flaw in your thinking. So if you're struggling and you would like some help in this area, just to talk, and you'd like to just get a blueprint and figure this out, and like to chat, every month I open up part of my schedule. There's a limited number of slots. And for the serious hitter, and if that's you, if you're willing to do whatever it takes to reach your goals, and to reach your dreams, then go ahead and schedule a strategy call. Go to mattnokes.com slash apply, mattnokes.com slash apply, and schedule a strategy call. And we'll get together and we'll go through what's going on with your hitting, what's going on with your approach, and we can get you on the road to getting this all resolved. So I wish you all the best, and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed making this for you.